An unknown hacker has compromised 600,000 home routers and bricks them with a malicious firmware update. These things are now totally dead. Who did this and why? Also in your Hacking News Roundup, Europol has launched the largest ever operation against botnets and a $300 gaming router has an embarrassing little vulnerability. But first, this is a strange one. Hundreds of angry people have taken to Reddit complaining that their router has suddenly stopped working. Their devices are just getting a solid red light and no internet. And the standard advice of jabbing a paperclip in that reset hole doesn't fix the problem. The routers are bricked, totally dead and completely unusable. Various different makes and models are affected, but the one thing they all have in common is that they were all issued by the same American ISP, Windstream. This chart shows the different types of routers that people are using with this ISP. And as you can see, almost overnight, hundreds of thousands of devices were knocked totally offline. Now, this all happened back in October 2023, but at the time, this just wasn't reported on at all. However, eventually, a few of those dead routers made their way into the hands of security researchers at Lumen, who have just announced some interesting discoveries. They found that this was all the result of a bad firmware update. But given different makes and models of routers were affected, this can't have just been an accidental oopsie on the part of a single manufacturer. So the researchers investigated further. They discovered that the source of the malicious updates came from the fact that the routers had all been infected with malware known as Chalubo. This malware is well known. It's been around since 2018 and is specifically designed to infect routers so that they can be used in DDoS attacks. But Chalubo isn't designed to be destructive in any way. By default, it just doesn't have that functionality built into it. Chalubo also isn't very special. It's the kind of malware that can easily be bought off some cybercrime forum. This has led researchers to theorizing that the hackers used this malware in order to mislead researchers. The hackers didn't write their own code, but rather chose a commodity malware family in order to obfuscate attribution, to make it more difficult to figure out who the hell did this. And it seems to have worked, because the question of who's behind this is a total mystery. There was no TXT file left for researchers to find, no group has taken responsibility, we're just real short on clues here. The most plausible theory I've heard so far is that this could be down to the actions of a disgruntled former employee, with one Reddit user pointing out that just weeks before the hack, the company laid off a bunch of people. And as for the question of how the malware was able to infect routers in the first place, again, a total mystery. There are simply no known exploits for the affected models. But regardless of who's behind the attack and how they did it, this is unprecedented. The only other comparable case happened the day before the invasion of Ukraine, when 30,000 Viasat modems were totally bricked, making it difficult for the Ukrainians that relied on them to stay informed about the invasion that would take place the very next day. In that case, there's an obviously clear motive. But in this case, there just isn't one. The affected ISP, Windstream, primarily serves rural communities in the US. So why someone would want to target them? I have no ideas. Though I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. So let's hear those theories in the comments. Europol have announced Operation Endgame, the largest ever operation against botnets, they claim. Law enforcement have clearly put a lot of effort into this, even making a little animated miniseries about it, but more on that later. Operation Endgame targeted the malware dropping ecosystem. Malware droppers are at the top of the cybercriminal food chain. They're the initial bit of malware you might download in a phishing email or malvertising campaign. Malware droppers don't do anything malicious, or well, other to act as a foothold in your system, which is then used to drop the next payload, whatever that might be. And given how cybercrime is very much an interconnected ecosystem these days, many different cybercriminal operations rely on malware dropping operations to enable their business. So if you can disrupt the droppers, you frustrate a lot of people. Operation Endgame targeted an array of these malware dropping services, which resulted in 2,000 domains being seized and 100 servers being taken out. Eight cyber criminals have been added to Europol's most wanted list, but only four cyber bad guys were actually arrested. Now, for such a massive operation, the number of arrests here is not very impressive. This is predictably thanks to the long-running problem that the majority of cyber miscreants live in countries that make them untouchable to Western law enforcement. Europol seems to have come to terms with this inconvenient fact, and so one of the main aspects of Operation Endgame is the PSYOP part of it. Europol have set up a dedicated website, which they hope will instill fear into the hearts and minds of their cyber miscreant enemies. Welcome to the endgame. We've been investigating you and your cyber criminal undertakings for a long time, and we will not stop here. This is season one of Operation Endgame. Stay tuned. It will sure be exciting. Maybe not for everyone, though. Feel free to get in touch. You might need us. Surely we could both benefit from an open-hearted dialogue. You would not be the first one, nor will you be the last. Think about your next move. 
Europol even made a few videos. There's a pilot here, which essentially announces the operation alongside some dramatic music. But then we've got a little animated miniseries. Each episode is only a minute or so long though. Episode one, Green Horse, is about a hacker trying to sell his botnet before it's eventually taken out by the feds. Episode two, Connection Lost, follows a hacker that's trying to sell some software on a cyber criminal forum, but then their servers are taken out by the feds with the end screen saying, think about your next move. Given this is all in Russian, it's obviously aimed at the cyber criminals themselves, but I'm not totally sure what the point of all of this is. I mean, I'm all for the back and forth trolling between law enforcement and cyber criminals. It's always amusing to watch. Though saying, think about your next move to people that are clearly based in Russia and therefore untouchable doesn't seem very intimidating. Episode 3 is a little different though, as it specifically calls out the hacker behind the Emotet malware, which was actually disrupted by law enforcement a couple years back. The video doesn't spill any beans about the guy, but is rather just an appeal for information about his identity, using stock footage of dubious quality. Let's have a watch. This is Odd, and these are different nicknames he used during the past few years. Odd was responsible for Emotet. Emotet was taken down by law enforcement. He wanted to return, but got taken down quite fast again. Who knows what Odd is doing right now? What nicknames does he use? Who is he working with? What is his current product? Who is Odd? Please get in touch with us and let us know. So yeah, at least a little bit cringy, though it does make a change from the typical boring press releases. There is a countdown timer here, which I presume is just counting down to the release of the next batch of episodes. However, I'd be lying if I said I was on the edge of my seat waiting for season two. The plot of season one just really wasn't that interesting, and I get the feeling the videos were only made to flatter the egos of the agencies that took part in the takedown. But hey, maybe it's the kind of show where things only start to make sense in season three. A critical vulnerability in a TP-Link gaming router could give an attacker complete control over it. We're talking about the TP-Link Archer C5400X. God, I hate product names. The router is end of life, however, given the sheer number of reviews, the thing seems pretty popular, so there's going to be a good number of them still in use, which are now incredibly easy to exploit. The research comes from White Hats over at Wonky. They discovered that upon the router booting up, a sequence of events results in a binary called RF test being launched. The binary runs a TCP server that anyone on the network can connect to and used to run two basic diagnostic commands, WL and NVRAM get, which essentially allow you to grab basic information about the router. On the face of it, this is a simple diagnostic tool running in the background, which hardly anyone is ever going to make use of. However, the researchers discovered that the implementation of this RF test binary is sloppy, to say the least, because it only checks the first few bytes of a command to see if it contains WL or NVRAM, if true, the command is allowed to run. But there's nothing stopping a bad actor here from simply appending a semicolon and then tacking on another command at the end. For the uninitiated, a semicolon just lets you stick multiple commands on the same line. But the same effect here can be achieved with an ampersand or pipe symbol. And as you can see from the researcher's example, running the ID command, which they shouldn't be able to do, the interface runs commands with root level privileges, meaning an attacker is remotely given full access to do with the router as they please. As such, this vulnerability has a CVSS score of a perfect 10. The researchers did responsibly disclose the bug to TP-Link, and a patch is now available, which simply discards any commands containing the offending characters. However, these routers don't update automatically. Rather, you've got to manually grab the patch and do it yourself. So if you have one of these things, best patch it ASAP, or face the possibility of your $300 gaming router being added to some Chinese botnet. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.